Adventures of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to enjoy life, Life with Luigi, a comedy show created by Cy Howard, directed by Mac Benoff, and starring that celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carroll Nash, with Alan Reed as Pasquale. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum are glad to bring you life with Luigi because they feel it's a friendly, good-natured show that offers you relaxation and enjoyment. And you know, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum offers you relaxation and enjoyment, too. It's pleasant to chew on a smooth piece of Wrigley's Spearmint whether you're working, shopping, listening to your radio, or doing just about anything. Wrigley's Spearmint Gum tastes good. It's refreshing. And the good, easy chewing gives you comfort and satisfaction. So chew Wrigley's Spearmint Gum often, every day. Millions enjoy it, and you will, too. Now Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum brings you Luigi as he writes another letter describing his adventures in America to his Mama Basco in Italy. Dear Mamma Mia! In America, Mamma Mia, you make from yourself what you want. Take, well, uh, well, uh, well uh, take uh, Andrew Carnegie. He's uh, come from the old country, just uh, like me. He's uh, got himself a little job at the first, uh, just uh, like me. Then he's uh, made himself uh, $25 million, and that's the uh, way we're different. That's <laughs> <laughs> uh, true, Mamma Mia, I'm not rich yet, but... But I'm healthy, I'm happy, and, and lately my business has started to get good. This week I'm, I had a three customers, and they all bought the little antiques except one fella. He's just a minute to, to browse around. Yeah, browse around, Mamma Mia. That means, uh, that means uh, a fella, he comes in the store, he, he, he walks around, he don't buy, just walks around to look. And it makes the cash register nervous. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mamma Mia, I did it so good lately. I ordered some new stock from the men from who I buy these things. And I was busy putting up the new antiques on the shelf when a Pasquale is coming. Luigi, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> hello, Luigi. Hello, hello. <laughs> hello, Pasquale. Busy today, huh, little banana nose? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Pasquale. Hey, how you like all the new antiques I just got in, huh? He's a nice, huh? Don't ask me. Ask the termites. <laughs> oh, hey, what's this a junky-looking old chair here? Oh, junk. That's no junk, Pasquale. That's, that's a dunk and a fife. Dunk and a who? <laughs> fife. You never heard of this, Pasquale? Luigi, this is America. I only know about Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> <laughs> no, Pasquale, this Dunkin' Fife was the biggest man in American uh, uh, cabinet making. Early Fife was a light, very pretty, but the later Fife... All right, was... all right, stop a fife so much. <laughs> Luigi, I'll come in and suggest you take that little statue the truck driver left out in the street... Bring it inside. Somebody's liable to trip on it. Oh, go on and stop. What is it, Pasquale? Oh, oh, oh. Pasquale, my, my man is a fall over the statue of General Grant. Come on, are we going to help him? I told you. Oh, oh here, here, I'm, I'm going to help you up, mister. Oh. How you feel? Uh, you hurt? Well, my knee feels a little sprained. Never mind a hammer, Luigi. You look at General Grant the first. He's older. <laughs> Is that supposed to be funny? Oh, stop making such a fuss over a little flop. Next time when you walk in the street, to keep your eyes in front of your nose. <laughs> please, please, please. Look, please. mister, that statue should never have been out there in the first place. Oh, yes, that's a free country here. For General Grant, it feels like taking a little walk. That's his business. <laughs> Pasquale, Say, who the... owns this antique shop anyway? Uh, yes. Luigi Bosco, 21 in North Holstead That's street. right, mister, please. I'm a... It's all right. To let him take our name, Luigi. We ain't scared, are we? I'll see you in court. Pasquale, he's, he's, he's taking us to court. Us? Where you get that us? He's taking you to court. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Pasquale, you just said the we. Since then, I broke up with a partnership. <laughs> Pasquale, what's he, what's he going to do, this fellow? What the... Well, it looks like he's going to sue you in the court. Well, how much, how much Ooh, money? Oh, could it be $500? $500? Uh, 
but I ain't the guy to know five hundred dollars. Well, uh, don't worry, Luigi. The judge is a very fair. He lets you mail in the payments every week from Alcatraz. Me, <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm going to be in the jail. Pascal, that's a terrible and, and the whole thing was you father. You made the fella. You made him all the mad. Stop, Luigi. What's a happen is a happen. You don't want to see cows crying when they spill the milk. <laughs> anyway, stop worrying so much about a measly thousand dollars. Me, thousand? <laughs> Pasquale, you said it before it was... It? Well, don't go by me, Luigi. Everything it depends on the jury. You might get a jury that don't like you, so they soak you a thousand dollars and it costs. And it costs you? What's that? Uh? Means you've got to pay for the jury's lunches. <laughs> <laughs> Pasquale, you got to be in a waste of trouble of my whole life and I... If you wasn't hollering on that, all right, then he wouldn't have. All get... right, stop worrying, little cabbage puss. Calm down, relapse. Now you see how you good as Samaritans is going to take care of you. You remember when you first came from the old country? I said the first thing you got to get is insurance. I remember, remember, and, and I'm going to say how you get this. Luigi, you got a special insurance that's a cover accidents. Even if for General Grant? Even if for civilians. Yeah, I took out a liability insurance policy for you, and every year they renew it. Well, Pascal, I, I, I never saw you take out the no insurance policy like this for my store. Sure, Luigi. Here, look, look, under your cash register, I'll show you. Hey, hey. how you like? Do you believe me now? Yeah, that's right. Uh, Luigi Basco, liability. Oh, Pascal, that's so wonderful. <laughs> I'm glad you like it. Now, call up the insurance company. Tell them what happened. They're going to take care of the whole thing. And, and I'm going to do nothing, huh? Well, you did your share already. You gave them the accident. <laughs> <laughs> you see, Luigi, it's just like an auto insurance. So when you ain't got insurance, you've got to drive and care. But once you've got insurance, you don't have to aim your car. You can hit anything. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Call up. There's the number. All right, all right. I'm going to call it. That's it. Coverall Insurance Company, Kepner speaking. Yeah, well, uh, this is uh, Luigi Baskin, and I'd like to give you an accident. What? <laughs> Are you insured with us? Yeah, sure, I'm insured with you. Uh, what is your policy number, please? Policy number? Yeah, 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 on top. Yeah, oh, uh, the policy uh, is, is a 552-886-943-A C. Okay. No, no, is it not okay? Is it A C? I see. No, no, is it A C? Hold it a minute, Mr. Basco. I, I've got to check your file. Oh, check the file. Check the file. That's yes. all right. Check the file. All right. Uh, I'm gonna wait the All right. All right. <laughs> Luigi, tell me, what would you do without your fairy god, Papa Pasquale, to take care of you, eh? Every time you get in trouble, I rub with a magic lamp and a poop. Goodbye, trouble. Uh, <laughs> uh, Mr. Masco. Uh, what? Yes? The premium on your policy was never paid. Therefore, you never had insurance. You never... Huh? What's wrong, Luigi? Why are you turning so pale? Pasquale, I don't think you rub with the magic lamp hard enough. <laughs> Wait, give me that phone. Hello? Uh, Atsu Pasquale, fellows that took out insurance for Basco. What's your trouble? Uh, Mr. Pasquale, you had two months grace, and you never sent in the premium due on that policy, so it never went into effect. <laughs> uh, look, uh, if I send in the money now, uh, could you insure him for some accident that's uh, happened five minutes ago? <laughs> Absolutely not. Luigi? Yeah, Pasquale. I got a funny feeling this ain't your lucky day. <laughs> Uh, uh, all all right, right, attention yeah, yeah, class, please. I'll call the roll. Mr. Basco? Uh, here. Mr. Howitt? Here. Mr. Olson? Here. Mr. Schultz? Here, here. Uh, Mr. Schultz, one here is enough. Oh, good. The rest of you can go home. <laughs> please, class, we're studying the use of the adjective today. Now, who will tell us what an adjective is? Any volunteers? Here is my hand, Miss Folding. What a gallant way to propose. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Schultz. Uh, very well, Mr. Olson. An adjective is a word used to modify the meaning of a noun or pronoun. Good. Uh, Mr. Basco, an example, please. Uh, what, 
Uh, you, uh, an, an example? Uh, uh, yes. Well, uh, two times the two is a four. <laughs> what? That's the old spirit, Luigi. If we can't beat them in grammar, we're going to kill them with our arithmetic. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Basco, it's obvious your mind is not on your work today. Don't you feel well? I'm feeling terribly. Do you have any fever? Yeah, 5,000. <laughs> 5,000? That's what I'm going to need to feel about, $5,000. Hey, Jiminy, that, that's a lot of cold cash. Cold cash, that's a whole deep freeze. <laughs> Luigi, what, 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 what do you want with $5,000? Well, it's just, uh, it's a long story beginning with the General Grant. Ah, Luigi, even if you could dig up General Grant, $5,000 could never finance the Civil War over again, believe me. <laughs> Let him speak, Mr. Schultz. Well, when I was spotting him, I had a little statue outside in the street. The fellas a trip. He's assuming me for $5,000 and a Pasquale to say... I'm a was in a shoulder, but I ain't the now because the jury is going to make me buy General Grant to his lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmer, Luigi, are you for shimmer? <laughs> Luigi, you say this fellow who tripped is going to sue you for $5,000. That's right. Uh, did, did he break anything? No, sidewalk is still a good, but... <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, Mr. Vasco, he means did the man hurt himself? Well, I don't know, Miss Spalding, but a man who says he's going to take me in a court and he's going to... Uh, in a court, is, is this a possible? This is possible, Mr. Basco. It's possible a man is just trying to frighten you. He may go home and decide to forget the whole thing. Oh, you, you think so, Miss Spalding? Ah, sure, Luigi, stop worrying. Like we say in the delicatessen business, even a Frankfurter never worries, and look at the hot water it's always getting into. <laughs> Be like me, always happy, always laughing. <laughs> Ooh, my rheumatism is killing me. <laughs> How's the things, uh huh? You sound pretty happy for a fellow who's soon going to be exported back to Italy. No, 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 Mr. Scully, you can't scare me. My friends are telling me nothing is going to happen. And, uh, nobody is really going to sue me. Oh, no? Well, in that case, here's a little special delivery letter that come for you ten minutes ago. Oh, special special delivery? Uh, it's for special, me? Yeah, for you. On the outside, it says a private and a personal. So I opened it up and read it just to make sure it was. <laughs> Who, who's it from, Pascali? The other fellow's a lawyer. Uh, huh? Here, read your death certificate while you're still alive. Dear <laughs> Mr. Basco, I have a retained legal counsel, Mr. Peter Phillips. He's my lawyer. I'm representing because he suffered damage outside of your place of business at 21 and North Hall State Street due to your neg, neg, negligee. <laughs> Negligee, well, let me see Negligence What's that? Well, figure it out The Negligee, that's the underwear for ladies <laughs> Negligence, that's it for men <laughs> Ooh, What a maroon you are <laughs> well, let, me, let me finish this and I suggest you drop into my office within the next five days, arrange for a settlement out of a court. Pasquale, what that means? Means you've got to raise $25,000 in five days. Yeah, but how, how Pasquale, I, I can't do it. Put on more men. <laughs> no, Pasquale, please, please, you've got to help me. You've help got to me, help me, help me, help me. Every time you get into trouble, I suddenly become your private Salvation's Army. Well, no, but it must, it must, must be something I sure, can do. Sure, sure. You've got to fight back. You've got to fight the fire with a fire insurance. Oh, yeah, but, yeah, but how, how, Pascal? How? By getting a bigger lawyer than he's got. That's a how. Huh? That's a what you do. But, Pascal, I, I mean, you, you mean getting a bigger lawyer That's like That's what I, I said. I was standing here and said it. You standing there. Why don't you wash your ears? Yeah, but this? a bigger lawyer. But I never saw his lawyer. You said he's hey, a bigger lawyer. But I never saw his lawyer. All I right. don't know. I don't know how big he is, that the lawyer. 
<laughs> Look, Luigi, leave everything to me. I'm going to ask around the neighborhood to find out who's the biggest lawyer in town. Then you're going to go to him and beg him to take your case. You, I'm going to beg. Suppose he's the don't want it. Then you got only two choices left. Two choices. What is the two choices? Canada or Mexico. Mama. <laughs> Before we return to life with Luigi, here's a suggestion that may be a real help to your popularity. Chew a few sticks of refreshing, delicious Wrigley Spearmint gum every day. You see, besides giving you enjoyment, Wrigley Spearmint chewing gum freshens your mouth and helps keep your breath sweet. Then, too, the natural chewing action helps keep your teeth clean and bright, your smile attractive. So in two important ways, delicious Wrigley Spearmint gum can help you be at your best when you're with other people. Make it a point to carry Wrigley Spearmint gum with you wherever you go. Keep a package handy so you can enjoy a stick whenever you want it. That's Wrigley Spearmint chewing gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. Now let's turn to page two of Luigi Basco's letter to his mother in Italy. Well, Mamma Mia, it's now two days since I got the lawyer letter. Seems like two years. Last night, I had a nightmare. Whole Supreme Court was chasing me in the street. <laughs> Only one thing is saved me. They couldn't run faster. They had on these long black night gowns. <laughs> well, Mamma Mia, I'm not yet a citizen. And I'm... Luigi, my fellow boob. <laughs> Ach, Luigi, what you look like. Bad. But so pale. Luigi, I got a plate of potato salad in my delicatessen window that's got more color than you. <laughs> sure, Sam. I'm, I'm never felt so worried since I'm in America. This fellow Phillips, he sent me lawyer letter, and he wants I should have paid him $25,000 in the five days. That's he's going to take me to court. 25000 Him, he tripped over a little statue, not the Wrigley building. <laughs> Schultz, Schultz, please, what am I going to do? No, no, wait, Luigi, let me think. Aha, ach, into my head, an idea just pooped. <laughs> <laughs> he, he didn't give you a summons yet, did he? No, no, summons, what was that? What's that? A summons, but, uh, Luigi, did a man in a funny little hat walk into your store, ask your name, stick a piece of paper into your hand, and then jump through the window? No. Then you ain't got a summons. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't worry, you can come and hide yourself in my house, hmm? Oh, no, shit, I'm, I'm... I'm not gonna hide them. Hey, Luigi, Luigi, I got him. Who? Mr. Pasquale, oh, don't do me. that. Please. Excuse me, I thought it was a little man. Yeah, sure. When, when a fella is sitting in the shadow of the electric chair, don't you go around shocking him. <laughs> oh, why, so, so, Luigi, listen. I think we could get your case handled by Sam Chapman. Sam Chapman? Is, is he a big lawyer? The biggest. But how come he's going to take this case? Well, I got a customer, Joe Marsala. He's got a third cousin, Mario, who's a best friend of Tony Marino, who's a big shot, and the same large with a friend who's a high up in politics who knows he's a lawyer. <laughs> well, he's willing to do the friend a favor who'll do it for Tony, who'll do it for Mario, who'll do it for Joe, who'll do it for me. No, stop! I'm dizzy from playing leapfrog. Yeah, but, <laughs> but, but, Scotty, you, you said you're going to do it for me? Sure, little pumpkin seed eyes, sure. Uh, Here, here's, here's a card. And remember one thing, Luigi. This uh, Chapman is a big shot, so, so act nice, so be polite. Don't say stupid things. Use your best the night school English. You do everything he says. Oh, I'm going to use that to Pasquale. Uh, gonna... Yeah, Pasquale, for once you're right. The most important thing is to have a lawyer like Chapman on your side than on the right side. <laughs> Mr. Basco, do you have an appointment with Mr. Chapman? No, 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 but, but, but I'm in need of his advice so very bad. Well, I don't know if Mr. Chapman can see you today. He's all filled up. Oh, that's so bad. He's eaten too much, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean his appointment, sir. 
He's in with the client right now, and in about 15 minutes, he's got to rush downtown on a big case. Well, then maybe I'm going to rush downtown with him, and maybe he's going to give me advice on the trolley car. What? I'll do just as I say, Harry. I don't think you'll have any more trouble. Thanks, Sam. Thanks a million. Right. Well, Mr. Basco, I think I can squeeze you in now. Just squeeze. walk in. Squeeze. That's a nice thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yes? Oh, and... Uh, who are you? I'm, I'm Luigi Bass. Fellow, your secretary was just squeezed in. And... What? <laughs> <laughs> are you here on business, my good man? Yes, I'm. I'm going to need your help very bad. Oh, uh, who sent you here? Well, uh, he, he's my friend, Pasquale. He's, he's got a customer, Joe Marsal, who's got a third cousin, Mario, who's the best friend of Tony Moreno. He's in your lodge, you know. Oh. <laughs> you recognize me now? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh... I'm a little rushed today, Mr. Bosco, so if you don't mind... No, uh... please, uh, please, uh, Mr. Chapman. How many do you help uh, very badly? All right, all right, then. Let's have it quick. What happened? Well, fella is a, is a walk by. He's a trip over General Grant, and now he's uh, a... Uh, uh, hold it. Uh, who's this General Grant? <laughs> who's a what? Uh? General Grant. American president, 1868. <laughs> yes, 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 I know that. Yeah, well, I don't know why you ask me. Look, start all over, Basco, and give me all the details this time, will you? All right. Uh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm a good antique shop. I'm, I'm getting uh, some new antiques. One was a little statue, General Grant, and this fellow, Phillips, he's a passerby. He's a trip and a fall down. Oh, well, now, let's face it. You had no right to leave that statue on the street. Uh, Huh? Oh, it was a clear-cut case of negligence, and Phillips can sue you for anything he wants yeah, to. But I was and a... if you can't pay, the judge can declare a fine and the jail sentence. Mamma mia, I'm a got to myself in jail with a Pasquale's connection. <laughs> I uh, <laughs> presume you had no insurance, otherwise you wouldn't be here. I said I, I'm a got no insurance, and, and I'm a sorry I came. Well, I don't think I can take this case anyhow. We have here a clear case of res ipsa locator. No, no, I'm a res no locator. I'm a do uh, nothing. <laughs> wait, wait, that's Latin. And it means that negligence may exist, A, where the accidents of a type not occurring in the absence of negligence, B, it is caused by an instrument within the de- defendant's control, or C, the possibility of plaintive responsibility. Now, do you understand that? No. <laughs> All I'm understood there was an A, B, and a C. <laughs> look, see, in law, contributory negligence exists when the plaintiff fails to exercise a duty of care for his own personal safety. Now, do I make myself clear? Well, sure, you make yourself clear. Now I wish you were going to make me clear. Oh, <laughs> oh fast, go, go get somebody else. Mamma mia, I'm, no, no, I'm making you so mad, and, and I'm going to need you so much... Please, uh, Mr. Chapman, you tell a judge I'm a good citizen. I, I don't mean to know how I'm... A, and, and, and anyway, I'm... Anyway, I'm a no-got to the $25,000. What makes you think he's going to sue you for that amount? So, what, is, is it impossible? No, oh, no, no, no. I had a client once who was sued for 100000 <laughs> You're just 25000 I'm sorry, Mr. Chapman. I wish I could afford it to be sued for more. <laughs> please, please, Mr. Chapman. Say, 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 please, are you going to help well, me? Well, now, my fees are quite high. I think you should know this. Oh, that's nothing. The money is, I mean, nothing to me. Here, I'm even going to pay you everything in advance. Here, let me see. Here's a $4. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Why, Bosco, I couldn't touch this case without at least a $500 retainer. Five, $500? Oh, yes. And if we should lose, I take it to the appellate court, and then the court of appeals, and maybe even to the Supreme Court. Who knows? And by this time, my fee might run into the thousands. <laughs> Mr. Basco, where are you going? I'm going to get another lawyer to tell me how I'm going to pay you. <laughs> hey, Luigi, what happened at the lawyer's office? Well, it was a terrible... I'm, I'm not going to afford this, Mr. Chapman. Too expensive, huh? Pasquale, I think, I think uh, if he's a stop to say hello to you in the street, uh, that the one award is going to cost you five dollars. <laughs> and he's to give you no advice for free, eh? Pasquale, he says they could assume me for hundred thousand dollars. One of my advice, Luigi. What? Don't pay it. <laughs> <laughs> Pasquale, you know, help him. I'm, I'm going to get it somebody quick. Uh, wait, Luigi. I just decided to pay Mr. Chapman to save you in a call. Yep. Yeah. You just. Hey, you you. You gonna pay? Uh-huh. Oh, but a Pasquale, I... Well, I better warn you, he's... Is it maybe gonna cost a few thousand dollars? Ah, you... uh-huh, so what's the money? I'm gonna be happy to lend you even a five thousand dollars. 
providing you also take the interest on the money. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take an interest. What interest, the Pasquale? Interest in my daughter, Rosa. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to call her in. Rosa! 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 <laughs> Rosa, say hello to Luigi. <laughs> well, Luigi, what's look better to you? 20 empty years in the jail or 50 full years with a Rosa? Well, Pasquale, I'm afraid those years, they're going to be too full. <laughs> Remember, Luigi, there's only one man can save you. That's me. One man, that's right. There's only one man, but Pasquale, it's not to you. Come back, my son. No, no, go by, Papa. <laughs> Well, this is very strange. Now, please, please, Mr. Phillips, uh, uh, don't take me in a court. Uh, I'm going to get the $100,000 you want. I don't know, Basco. My lawyer tells me I got an open and shut case. Then maybe you shut it up before it's going to open up. Please. <laughs> <laughs> no, please, Mr. Phillips, you, you, you got nice uh, little grocery store. We bought, we bought the storekeepers. Well, yeah. Frankly, I never sued anybody in my life. I never even been in a court. Me too. Would you believe it? I spent a whole hour with my lawyer yesterday, and I didn't understand a word he said. Mamma mia, I think we both got the same lawyer. <laughs> By the time he'd get through taking his share and the fee, the whole thing wouldn't be worthwhile. You know, frankly, I only spent five bucks on the doctor getting my knee fixed. Well, up. here, here, take it back of the money, five dollars. Oh, no, 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 no. No, please, right. please, take. I'm not going to feel about it. Oh, okay. And don't worry about a thing, Basco. As far as I'm concerned, the case is closed. Oh, good. And I thank you so much, Mr. Phillips. You, you nice, nice man. And, and I'm going to come and see you often in your store, too. So long. Goodbye. Mama, that's my lucky day, my luck. Oh, cow. Here, I'll help you up, Basco. Oh, oh that... <laughs> was that the broom outside of your store? Uh, my broom? Yeah, you, you broom, uh, honey, you didn't... Uh, uh, don't say another word, Vasco. Take back your five bucks and let's forget the whole thing. Friends, the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you enjoyed tonight's episode of Life with Luigi. And they want to remind you that Wrigley's Spearmint Gum gives you real chewing enjoyment and satisfaction. There's lots of delicious, long-lasting spearmint flavor in every stick. Tastes mighty good. Then, too, Wrigley's Spearmint Gum is really smooth and satisfying to chew on. You enjoy sinking your teeth into it. So whether you're working, having fun, or just taking things easy, be sure to have a package or two of Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum handy. Enjoy it often and offer it to your friends. They'll appreciate it. Next time you're at the store, get a few packages of Wrigley Spearmint Gum from your merchant's handy display. Remember, that's Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. <laughs> The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to be sure to listen next week at the same time when Luigi Basco writes another letter to his mama Basco in Italy. Life with Luigi is a Cy Howard production. Pat Burton is associate producer. The script is written by Mac Benoff and Lou Derman and directed by Mr. Benoff. J. Carol Nash is starred as Luigi Basco with Alan Reed as Pasquale, Hans Conrad as Schultz, Jody Gilbert as Rosa, Mary Schiff as Miss Spalding, Joe Forte as Horowitz, Ken Peters as Olsen, with Joe Kern, Herb Butterfield, and Jeanette Lewis. Music under the direction of Lud Gluskin. For a story and pictures of your favorites on Life with Luigi, see the current October issue of Radio TV Mirror Magazine. Charles Lyon speaking. This is the CBS Radio Network.